Okay, I guess we can start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. In this session, I will share our view of the trainable open source developers across the world and what does it mean for open source community and projects. And we will also share the experience from the open oiler community to illustrate what is unique about developers in China and how does open oiler growing so fast in China. Uh, this might be useful for open source communities or projects that uh, wants to expand in China. Uh, the content of this session will be divided into three parts. In the first part, we will have a look on the open source developers reports and to have a general view about the new trend of open source and open source developers. And in the second part, we will share our observations about what is unique about open source developers in China, uh, such as what kind of communication applications uh, do they use and what is the most effective way of content delivery in China. This could be very important for, uh, very important and useful for open source projects that want to promote themselves in China. Uh, in the last part, uh, we will use the true story of open oiler and share our experiences about how to run an open source community in China and attracted over 2000 contributors and over 60,000 of users in only one year. Uh, we will share the details about how we run local events, uh, how we do online broadcasting and uh, how we cooperate with universities and students. Uh, this could also be very useful for open source projects that want to expand in China. Uh, okay, let's get into the first part, uh, the new trend of open source. Uh, in this part, we will take a closer look at the community report released by GitHub for year 2020. Uh, since GitHub is one of the most popular software hosting and development platform, uh, their data of open source developers could greatly reflect the overall open source contributor status and trends. Uh, let's have a look on the details. Uh, first, we will look at the total number and the general trend of open source developers. According to GitHub's community reports for year 2020, uh, which was released at second quarter this year, uh, there are more than 56 million open source developers across the world. From the graph, we can see that the number of open source developers has grown rapidly, especially for the past few years. Another thing we can observe in the past few years is that there are also a great number of new open source projects coming out uh, in those years. From, from the results, uh, over from the report, over 60 million new repositories was created uh, in the last year. Uh, that's a very large number. And from the observation for open source projects and the contributors, we can see a clear trend that open source will continue to grow rapidly in the future. And back to the uh, graph of the GitHub community report, it is expected that the community, the contributor number will grow uh, to doubled to 100 million by the year of 2025. Uh, maybe experiences, experienced open source contributors or managers might say that the trend of open source is not new and they have already experienced such trends. Uh, but now this um, part might be quite new. Uh, from the GitHub community report, uh, they also have an analysis on open source contributors by regions. We will have a look on the reports of the year 2019 and year 2020. Uh, first, have a look at the report from year 2019. Uh, this graph shows the new open source contributors uh, for each year starting from 2014. Uh, we can see that from the beginning, the most part of the new open source contributors for each year uh, coming from Europe and North America uh, take about four out of five uh, in the total number, 
and it is clear the trend that open source contributors come from Asia has grown rapidly and start to surpass the uh, new contributors in Europe and North America starting from year 2018. And the slope of the increasing curve for Asia contributors becomes larger in recent years. And from the regional contributor graph of year 2020 community report, we have an overview of the percentage of open source contributors uh, from Asia was surpassed new contributors from Europe and North America. Since the culture of open source comes from Europe and North America, the total number of open source contributors in those regions still uh, the most among all the regions. But Asia with almost 31% has surpassed Europe with the uh, percentage of about 27. But still falling slightly behind North America uh, with the percentage of 34%. Uh, but very interesting point is in uh, small words, uh, the trend the trends of the contributor numbers. We can see that in North America, the total percentage decreased by 2%, and in Asia, the number increased 1.1%. And the percentage in Europe almost not changed. According to these trends, uh, the number of contributors in Asia will overtake the contributors in North America to become the largest portion in just this year or next year. Uh, I think this is amazing. And that's why we do think that in the future, uh, how an open source project or community can success, uh, propo successfully promoting and occurring contributors in Asia could be one of the key points to become uh, successful. Uh, in the GitHub 2020 report, uh, it also provides a more detailed data about distribution of open source contributors by geographic location over time. Uh, it uses the brightness of colors to illustrate the contributors' distribution. Uh, we can see that in year 2020, uh, 2015, most open source contributors came from United States and other uh, strong contributors from Europe, uh, like Germany and the United Kingdom. And in present days, Asia countries starts to have a brighter color. And uh, uh, the most obvious country is China and India. Uh, looking to the future, uh, as we mentioned in previous content, it's expected that the total number of open source contributors is likely to reach the uh, 100 million in year 2025. And is projected that the open source contributors from the United States states will drop in and stabilized at around 16%. And uh, uh, the strong, uh, strong contributions from China to about uh, 30%, 13%, and India with a percentage of eight. Uh, and looking at one more step to the year 2020, uh, 2013, according to the GitHub's observation and prediction, the number of open source contributors in China will become uh, top one across the world. As mentioned above, uh, we can see that in the next uh, two, uh, five to 10 years, uh, if you want to uh, your new open source project or community to be successful, uh, contributors in Asia will be one of the key points uh, for your project. And combining from uh, this slide and last slide, uh, uh, I can say that uh, if you want your open source community to be successful, uh, open source developers and contributors in China could be very important for your uh, project uh, in the next five or 10 years. And that uh, is the main starting point of this session. Okay, uh, now we have saw the numbers on digits about new trends of open source contributors uh, and the country. And uh, now the trades, uh, trends of uh, open source contributors in China, uh, in Asia, and especially in China uh, will continue to grow. So uh, how could we attract those contributors 
uh, to our projects or communities. I think the first thing you should know is uh, what is unique about contributors in China, uh, comparing comp contributors from other regions uh, in the world. And in this part, we will share some observa observations. And this might not be the whole picture about Chinese contributors, uh, but it could provide some general view. And uh, I want to point out that uh, we are not uh, going to judge uh, which method is correct or wrong. I'm just trying to uh, uh, provide some general uh, information about uh, how uh, uh, the Chinese contributors uh, use uh, in uh, and to contribute to the project. Uh, the first thing is quite obvious. Uh, China has a very large number of uh, software engineers. According to the report from the Ministry of uh, Industry and Information Technology in China, at the end of this year, uh, there are about 7 million software engineers. And we can took another country for just for comparison. According to Data USA, the number of software engineers is about 4.2 million in US. But according to the previous content, we can see that the number of open source contributors are still led by US. And that could lead us to the second and third point of this slide. Uh, even though the number of open source contributors is growing fast, but there are still gaps uh, for open source cultures here in China comparing to uh, those in US and North America. Uh, for example, uh, there are still software engineers that does not have a good understanding about uh, famous open source license and what uh, they are, what are the key difference between the different license. Uh, this could be a result of, uh, for complicated reasons, but I think uh, we can summarize it as uh, the uh, lack uh, for the open source culture. Uh, for example, uh, comparing to the US and Europe, we are lack of spreading open source ideas for open source participants, uh, especially in schools and universities. And there are still a big portion of open source contributors, uh, open source and open source contributions are obviously uh, KPI driven. These are not very healthy for open source cultures and uh, open source projects. Uh, luckily, many people are have already observed this and start to take actions. And we will cover this in the uh, later part. And as there are many uh, tech giants in China now, uh, so there are lots of open source projects for similar use case for different tech giants. Uh, so the competition is fierce. Uh, this could lead to a double-edged sword. Uh, this could be a double-edged sword. Uh, on the other hand, competition, on one hand, competition will motive into innovations. And on the other hand, uh, brilliant engineers are divided into groups. Uh, if they can work together, uh, something better might happen. And another thing that might also related to the open source culture is the uh, language of Chinese contributors use for discussion and development. Uh, some of the projects are using Chinese, and uh, some of some uh, then there are some aggressively discussion about this uh, recently in the Chinese open source world. Uh, there are people standing for both sides. Uh, so if you want to run an open source project or community uh, in China, you'd better know uh, this fact. Uh, another important thing or should I say the most important thing you should know about the Chinese uh, is that they are using WeChat for communications. Uh, we know that in most open source projects, developers usually communicate using traditional tools like mailing list and IRC and Slack. And it's also quite commonly uh, to use for uh, new open source projects and the communities. Uh, but in China, the most popular co communication application is WeChat. Uh, if you want to successfully run your open source project in China, uh, you might learn how to use WeChat. WeChat can provide all kinds of useful features. 
uh, but the most valuable uh, tool for running an open source project is the WeChat group and WeChat public account. Uh, the WeChat group can uh, easily be set up by send out invitations through messages or QR codes or face to face. For example, we usually include the QR code for the related WeChat group in the slides uh, during the presentations. Uh, this will attract developers uh, that are interested to join the group. Uh, and the group can be used for many things uh, like Q&A, uh, discussion, announcement, etc. Uh, WeChat is, uh, is uh, in always online manner, so you will uh, not uh, miss any new messages. And of course, you can set uh, to the mute mode and check messages uh, once per day. Uh, another important WeChat feature for open source project could be the WeChat public account. Uh, it provides a platform for sharing all kinds of information, uh, such as tech blogs, articles, video, and broadcasts. Uh, this could uh, uh, this also have uh, it also has a lot of uh, extensions to allow you to add many new useful features, uh, as shown in the uh, red graph. Uh, uh, we have uh, this public account added two buttons uh, to the bottom. And the left one will lead to uh, the sign up website for a recent local events, and uh, the red one will lead to the tech blog uh, site, mini site. Uh, you can add also many other interaction functions like uh, automatic uh, reply to some keyword messages. Uh, a lot of famous projects and communities uh, that uh, worked well in China have already started to use WeChat, uh, setting up groups and public accounts, uh, such as the CNZ Foundation and the OpenStack Foundation and the MariaDB Foundation. And Apache also have uh, a local uh, ALC. They have also had the uh, public account. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the next one I want to uh, talk about is, is the content delivery. It is very important to deliver the correct content to the correct people. Uh, for open source projects running outside of China, uh, I believe the most important way of content delivery is like Twitter, YouTube, and Stack Overflow. Uh, but in China, you should consider using some other platforms uh, because of the uh, internet issue. Uh, the first one we uh, have just covered is the WeChat. You can deliver your content in the WeChat group and the WeChat public account. Uh, people inside your project WeChat group uh, is for sure very interested to your project. Uh, uh, and so, uh, so your content will be delivered to the correct crowd. Uh, and uh, people always share useful public accounts, contents uh, with their friends and in their groups. So uh, it could be uh, a very good advertisement if you got good content in your public account. It could be also a very good way to increase uh, the visibility in China. Uh, in China, the top tier WeChat public account can have funds for 10 million uh, level so that's really uh, a, a really a lot of uh, number of people. Uh, another important platform is Bilibili. It is more uh, like YouTube. It's a streaming platform. It's quite famous in China, and open source projects can uh, provide recorded presentations, demos, or hands-on videos and post them there. It can also uh, do live broadcast. Uh, for your events, and you can easily generate a link and share it through many other applications such as WeChat. You can share the link easily to the WeChat group and in the public accounts. Uh, a top tier Bilibili account can also have a 10 to 100 million level of funds. Uh, so it, uh, if you can use it wisely, it could be bring a lot of benefits. Uh, in this graph, I show uh, uh, Bilibili account for the open OLR community, and it has a recording for uh, every uh, t uh, weekly meeting for each 
uh, special interest groups and uh, many other uh, information. Uh, the third one is Zhuhu. It is uh, like a combination of Stack Overflow and Quora. Uh, people always ask kind of all kinds of questions on Zhuhu and especially the younger generations and student, students. Uh, it could be a very good place to do Q&A and advertise them to uh, other more instant platforms such as WeChat. Zhuhu is also a very good place to write long contents. Uh, as contents uh, in platform like WeChat uh, is more instant, people always read and share the contents uh, in the WeChat uh, for the first three days or two. Uh, and after the content was delivered. Uh, but for long term, uh, the reader account will decrease very fast. So it is more suitable for instant content. And on Zhuhu, the content will always show up when people asking questions about uh, related keywords. So it is more suitable for in-depth uh, technical content and for long term. Uh, the best way is to use them uh, this platform to, is to combine them. Uh, we think the open order handled this very well. And in the next part, we will share the true experience about how we run open order community. I hope it's useful for you. Uh, in the next part, we will uh, deep dive into the open order community operations uh, in last year. This could be a very good example showing how to run a new open source community in China. Uh, I guess some of the audience may have already heard of Open Order Community, and it is new to some others. So I will spend a little bit of time to introduce the Open Order Community. The Open Order, Com Open Order Community is uh, uh, is an innovative uh, platform nurtured by the community communications. Uh, it is uh, aimed to build a unified open source uh, operating system that can support multiple processor architectures and advanced hardware software application system. And the slogan of the open order community is to build the most innovative uh, operating system open source community. Uh, the open order community is quite new comparing to other famous open source projects and uh, communities. It was uh, first announced in July 2019 and open sourced in December, uh, just one and a half years old. But because of the large base number of open source developers in China and the high enthusiasm of open source by them, uh, the open order community has quickly gathered over 2,400 uh, contributors from over 60 companies in China. I think this could be uh, somehow prove that the operation of a open order community is quite success. Uh, the first key reason uh, uh, why open order community can gather so many companies uh, is, of, is the open governance policy. The open order community is governed by the board of directors. I think that that's very common uh, in many open source projects. Uh, and currently there are uh, from uh, eight companies and we have 17 technical community members and uh, over 60 uh, member companies. I will just jump uh, to this content because uh, uh, many other open source projects also work like this. And uh, despite of the high level open source governance, open source community is also very open to uh, the daily development workflow. The development actions are separated, separated into a special interest group or six. Uh, I think the idea of six might be very familiar for some audience, but uh, this is quickly, uh, uh, it, because this is quite common in some open source communities like open, OpenStack, Kubernetes, and CentOS, but could be quite new for some uh, others. Uh, like I didn't saw this kind of uh, thing in the big data projects and DB projects. Uh, prob probably probably uh, they have such things, but does not have the same name as, or does not operate uh, so organized. Uh, in, uh, uh, 
And for the as the operation part, the open oiler community also arranges all kind of online and offline uh, events uh, aimed for different audience. Everyone should be able to suit uh, to find suitable events to attend and uh, uh, fall in love with open oiler. For example, uh, despite all the weekly meet online meetings uh, for new and potential uh, contributors, open oiler will arrange uh, offline meetups. Uh, those events will include technical sharing, uh, case study, and Q&A. It is very suitable for newbies to learn the basics, ideas, and knowledge about OpenOiler. And for uh, experienced developers, uh, OpenOiler uh, arrange project team gathering for SIG members to gather together and have a whole day of face-to-face -face technical decision, uh, technical discussion. Uh, this is quite useful uh, for special interest in group uh, development. Sometimes face-to-face uh, -face discussion is much more efficient uh, than online meetings. Uh, Open Euler also uh, arrange uh, larger developer uh, events uh, like the Open Euler summits at the end of the, uh, the year and the Open Euler develop, Developer Day, uh, which held it just last month. Uh, it also provides opportunities for developers to gather and discuss for technical details, but it is slightly different with the uh, project team gathering events. Uh, these events are very suitable for uh, cross uh, special interest group uh, and cooperations. For example, in the last developer day events, the Open Euler SIG, the Open Stack SIG, and the DB SIG cooperated. Uh, very well and made the decision uh, for the next MariaDB version to be content in the next Open Euler release. Uh, expect, except for the uh, self-held uh, events, Open Euler also joined uh, some uh, well-known open source events in China. Uh, one of them is the open source Hackathon. Uh, the Hackathon held it once or twice uh, per year. Uh, it is already the 12th uh, for this year. Uh, in this in this year, uh, uh, in this event, experienced developers and students uh, gather together to work uh, hands-on projects within three days. Uh, it is a very good chance for open source uh, projects to promote them to and gather new contributors, uh, especially for uh, students contributors. Uh, and another important and unique thing uh, Open Euler did is the community university cooperation. Uh, China has a very huge number of uh, students crowd, uh, and they are the younger generation and the potential contributors uh, that will keep the open source project uh, healthy running. Uh, as mentioned above, uh, currently the culture building uh, about the open source is not very good in uh, Chinese compass. So it could be a very good chance for a community to fill the gaps there. Uh, open Euler uh, arranged a series, <coughs> sorry. Uh, open Euler arranged a series of uh, Open Euler into compass events. Uh, covering over 100 universities in China. And in these events, the community held lectures and hands-on workshops for not only the students, uh, but also the teachers. Uh, so we um, promote both the open source, uh, both open order and the open source culture uh, through these events. <laughs> And Open Euler also took part in many coding competition events in China, uh, such as the uh, ASCAS uh, Summer of Codes. Uh, you can see this is the Chinese version of Google Google Summer of Code. Uh, there are almost 1,000 tasks in these events uh, in this year. Students can find topics that uh, they are interested in and uh, uh, a corresponding mentor uh, could help them to finish the task. And there uh, is a similar event 
uh, the China Open Source Software Innovation Contest. And in this event, uh, the goal and the task for the contest are proposed by the attendees instead of the organizers, uh, which could be more creative. Uh, to move to move one more step further, uh, Open Euler cooperated with, with uh, uh, over fifty top tier universities in China to design courses for Open Euler. Uh, by doing this, uh, Open Euler made a chain that combining industry, university, and the community. Uh, the students will have a clear view about the technology, the community, and what are the communities, uh, what are the companies that he or she can go after graduate uh, if uh, they contribute to the community. And this could be really attractive uh, to students. Uh, another, cre another creative action uh, that Open All the Community have done uh, uh, is that the Chinese contributors uh, lacks, uh, like to use uh, the WeChat uh, a lot. And there is a WeChat small application. Uh, WeChat provided a small uh, a platform and allow users to create lightweight applications. Uh, in our case, uh, the Open Online community developed some uh, lightweight applications, and one of them is the, uh, uh, for arranging community online meetings. Uh, it could be very, uh, it is very powerful and could include a lot of meeting details, uh, like the SIG, uh, SIG maintainers can arrange SIG meetings with this application very easily and spread them uh, in the WeChat group. And the meeting details will also automatically sync to the Open Order official website. As I mentioned before, uh, almost everyone is using WeChat in, in China, so it could be very useful and uh, welcome by the Chinese developers. Uh, there is also a similar application uh, ar for arranging offline events like Meetup and PDGs. Uh, this could be also be very uh, useful. Uh, so we have covered most of the methods that OpenAller used uh, to run a community successful in the last uh, year. Uh, and we gathered quite many uh, developers and companies uh, to the community. Uh, but there are still a lot to improve. Uh, just last month, the OpenAI community started a series of self-improvement uh, actions. The community user experience seek formed a subgroup to and uh, traveled across the country to perform face-to-face -face interviews uh, with the developers to collect their thoughts and uh, gather feedbacks about the community. And we also gather some top contributors from different companies and organize together during the developer day and perform a mindstorm about the improvement plan uh, about making the community better for developers uh, from the developer point of view. Uh, we hope that doing this could make the open order community better in the future. Uh, okay, uh, that's all for uh, the session. I hope our experience and tips is useful for you and uh, I hope uh, you can run your open source project or community successfully in China. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I will start to do uh, Q&As. So if you guys have any uh, uh, questions, we can uh, do it in the Q&A and uh, chat uh, channel. And the first question I got here is, how far does machine translation get you with bringing language barrier uh, instructed workflow uh, like GitHub's. Uh, uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, I think uh, most of the contributors in China doesn't have uh, doesn't have any doesn't have problems uh, when reading their 
reading the content from the website like GitHub. Uh, but sometimes I think the, the main point I want to bring up is uh, sometimes mm, they discuss using Chinese and uh, uh, especially in some uh, projects that's uh, originally from China, uh, they sometimes use um, uh, Chinese to in their pull request or uh, things like that. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be, I think it could be a problem for uh, people outside China that want to contribute to uh, those projects uh, in uh, to to those Chinese projects, but uh, I think for projects outside of China that want to run in China, it could be okay to uh, uh, it could be okay to use uh, uh, English in a platform like GitHub. Uh, people uh, have no problem reading it, but um, sometimes the the discussion are in Chinese and. Uh, 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 especially in in WeChat, uh, but uh, some other uh, projects have already uh, uh, started the work. Like they uh, they started a WeChat group and uh, uh, invited some of the key contributors to from the project to that group, and they will start to discuss discuss in using English. And uh, I think that also works well. Uh, and I think the, for the most part, uh, the uh, machine translation uh, platform like Google um, could uh, could almost solve the uh, language barrier problems uh, with the writing uh, languages. And uh, if you are trying to use WeChat, WeChat also have the uh, translation function. Uh, if you see people speaking Chinese in the uh, WeChat group, you can uh, click the uh, the content and select to uh, the machine will translate it to English for you. I think that could also be uh, helpful. And from the uh, Q&A channel, uh, uh, let's see. Ask the what is the status of being proficient in English uh, as a Chinese developer uh, becoming more common? Surely, uh, I think uh, have to understand what uh, is this question about. Uh, yes, uh, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, I think most of the uh, Chinese contributors uh, they don't have uh, problems in reading or typing English. Uh, sometimes they might have some problems in speaking English, uh, but I think uh, it is not about uh, they don't know English. Uh, it is more like uh the uh get used to or uh they just used uh Chinese uh, for discussion just um, for their uh for their uh they are just used to uh use use Chinese in their discussions uh, and I, I sometimes I saw that even in the uh, Apache Hadoop or Apache Spark uh, pull uh, uh, issue, uh, someone use it, or mailing list, someone uh, send directly uh, Chinese uh, for the pull, for the issue or pull request. I don't think that they don't know English. It's just uh, they did not thought about uh, to use uh, English. I think I guess it's more about uh, uh, culture. 
uh, lack of the uh, open source culture thing. It's not like that uh, they don't know uh, English. Uh, uh, back to the chat channel. Uh, Nick's question, I expected it many times. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, sometimes they report the box by, uh, uh, they report the box by uh, Chinese. I already saw some, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I th but I think the yes, I think the machine translation can help with that a lot uh, in our days. Yes. Uh, how many developers can work in English properly? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think. Um, for people contributing to uh, open source projects that's uh, originally from uh, outside of China, uh, like Spark, Hadoop, uh, project like that, uh, the contributors uh, can work in, in uh, English. Uh, but many projects uh, from China, I don't think they can. Uh, work properly because they are not get used to uh, to working in English um, because many of the projects are firstly internal projects and we already get used to uh, discussions and uh, uh, meetings in Chinese. So uh, after the project was open sources, open source, they still keep the uh, habit so uh, it could be hard for uh, projects that uh, started from uh, China okay uh, I guess the time is up and uh, uh, if you guys have uh, any questions that want to discuss uh, like about how to use WeChat and how to uh, take part in the uh, Chinese uh, Summer of Code uh, and even other events. Uh, you can contact me uh, from the uh, from from my email. I will leave my email here and. Uh, And probably I can uh, help you with that. Or if you want to set up uh, get, uh, WeChat uh, channels for your, or Bilibili channels for your community, uh, you can contact me. I can probably, I can help you with that. Uh, thanks a lot.